Hello, Exploring Computer Science class. This is a tutorial uh, for how to make a basic time schedule, employee time schedule um, for uh, using spreadsheets or Microsoft Excel. I am going to show you how to do this using Google Sheets because it's the one I know y'all have access to. A lot of you are kind of struggling with some of the Microsoft products and uh, you need the full version or something. So uh, for this in the next two weeks that we're in Google, um, that, uh, that we're in spreadsheets, we're going to be in Google on Google Drive and uh, that'll be a very good thing um, for all of you to use. So I want you to begin um, by just clicking right here and just saying Google Sheets and just start with a blank spreadsheet. Um, while that loads, let me talk you through spreadsheets quite a bit. Uh, spreadsheets, if you remember from our history unit, um, Apple, sort of the first thing that put Apple, the company Apple on the map, was they created a spreadsheet software that was pretty stinking cool. It was called Visicalc, um, and it could just do awesome things. Um, I want to bounce over here to our discussion this week. Don't forget to, to, after you watch this, to write one original post and reply to two others. Um, but I listed out some of the jobs I've had in my life, some of the roles that I've played. I've used spreadsheets all the time. Every single thing I've done in this life, I've used spreadsheets. And I've talked to multiple adults who have said all the same thing. As a teacher, our grade books are spreadsheets. Our st uh, track your student progress, particularly in this class, I type your type track your typing progress using a spreadsheet. Uh, as a pastor, I schedule my sermons and map out my sermons. I, we have a church database of uh, it's all saved in a, a spreadsheet. I'll teach you how to do that on the group project this week. Our attendance is tracked through spreadsheets. Our giving, how much money is being given to our church, is tracked through spreadsheets. As a dad, I've created to-do lists for my children and tracked whether they to to did them. Uh, spoiler alert, they don't because they're brats. Uh, as a husband, my wife and I have a family budget. We make a meal plan with spreadsheets. We use them all the time. I managed a homeless shelter in my day. I signed beds for homeless people, kept track of the money they paid us for those beds, the chores that they did, uh, time schedules for my employees, many more areas I use spreadsheets there. And when I was your age, I kept track of my assignments on a spreadsheet. I'm a runner and I keep track of all my workouts using spreadsheets. Spreadsheets are important right here. They're important. They're a big deal. They're important to learn how to use. And basically how spreadsheets work is they basically give you a graph. You have an x-axis and a y-axis just like any given graph. And every box in this graph has a number. This right here is box A1. This box over here is G16. This box here is D8. And how spreadsheets work is they map information to them and they give every single piece of information an address. As it turns out, this is very helpful. This is a very awesome thing. Um, so, um, so yeah, get to know spreadsheets, get to use them. Um, when I type information into an area, I'm going to type my name there. Um, I'm going to type ECS there. Um, now, uh, in the computer hard drive, uh, somewhere in the computer hard drive, I have just saved the A1 equals Kevin. That's what I've saved. And I've saved the A2 equals CSS. I can actually do math this way. I can click on A5 and I can type up here in the, the format box, or I can even type it down here too. It doesn't matter. Notice how it's both places. I can type equals 2 plus 2. And it says 4. So I have just now saved in the hard drive that A5 equals whatever the result of 2 plus 2 is, and it turns out the result is 2 plus 2 is 4. I can actually copy cells too. I can say I want A6 to equal exactly what A5 equals. Equals A5, now I've saved in the hard drive, that uh, the e A6 equals whatever A5 equals. And in the hard drive, A5 equals 2 plus 2. Um, I can actually use formulas. I can say I want A7 to equal the sum of a5 and a6, or a5 to a6, and it's 8. So if I change a5 to a5, then now uh, a5 equals 5, a6 equals whatever a5 equaled, and a7 equals whatever the sum of them equaled. Isn't that cool? Um, I can also now, you could do this with words, I can say a7 equals whatever a1 equals. It equals Kevin right? Um, what I can't do, because you can't do math with words, is if I do A1 plus A2, I, I get an error. That's telling me there's an error. Um, so can't do that. Uh, so 
wonderfully useful thing. Uh, but this week, we're going to get into all the math stuff next week, and that's going to be just super fun. Uh, but this week, we're just going to learn how to use spreadsheets to do simple databases. If you're not doing a simple database, use a database software like Microsoft um, uh, Access or something else. But for simple databases where you just want to keep track of a few pieces of information, um, that's what this week is about. It's just learning how to use um, use uh, spreadsheets uh, to do that. So your individual assignment, which is what this is the tutorial for, your individual assignment is just to pretend you are the manager of a company that has multiple employees and to create a timesheet. A timesheet is that thing that you print out that tells your employees when they should be at work and when they shouldn't be at work. A uh, very important piece of document because if your employees think they're supposed to show up and they show up, they're going to be mad that they shouldn't have showed up. And if they don't think they they have to show up and they don't show and you think they are, then nobody's there to run your business. Uh, so that's bad too. So very important document. So here's what I do. I usually start out in A1 and I say, this is what this is. I'm going to say this is K Lamb's Pizza Co. Time Sheet right there. I put that in A1 and then I usually skip a cell just to make it visually appealing and I usually go down to A3 and that's where I start. So I'm going to say um, that I have four shifts a day. I have morning, I have afternoon, I have evening, and let's say we're near a college campus and you know college students love to eat pizza at 2 a.m. so we have a overnight graveyard shift. Um, I can put times in here too, if I want to. Um, so I can make the cells bigger or smaller by scrolling my mouse to where I get this little line. So I can make it itty bitty tiny or I can make it really big. So anyway, so that's a helpful tool. You could do it over here too, by the way. I can make it really wide or really narrow. Um, so right now, morning, and this is going to be, we're going to say 8 to noon. Um, that's the morning shift, and then we could do the same thing with afternoon if you want. We could do noon to 4, and then we could do 4 to 8. And then we can do overnight, we could do 8 to midnight. So uh, so maybe not overnight, but late night or whatever. So we can do that if we want. Notice here that noon to 4 disappeared. Uh, so if I make it bigger, it will reappear like that. Notice this one over carries too. If I make it bigger, it won't. Um, so that's where you could use these. By the way, if you click here, you can select the whole column. Or if you click here, you can select the whole row. So that's a helpful tool. Okay, here, uh, down here, I'm going to put the day. And I'm going to teach you a wonderfully successful, helpful tool for doing the day. I'm going to type Sunday. I could type Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I could do that. Or I could just grab this little blue box here. See how I get a black? cross when I scroll over a black plus sign, grab the blue box and pull it down and it will count the days of the week for you. Isn't that cool? Um, I'm going to delete Sunday. So by the way, it does that with numbers too. If I do a one there and I grab the little blue box, it will do a one. But if I give it a pattern two, three, and I select all the boxes, that's the key, select all the boxes, scroll down, it will keep counting for me. So that little tool, this little blue box right here, super helpful tool. Use it a lot. It's a fun tool. We're going to use it again next week when we do formulas. So then all I need to do is put in employee names. So there's two ways I could do this. One is I could just fill in the employees by themselves. Let's say George is going to work there and there. And let's, and let's say there's an Annika, right? Let's put Annika there and there. And let's say there's a Peter. Put him in a couple places. Okay, I could do it that way. That's fine. Um, once again, if I select all of these and just hit delete, it will we'll not do what I thought I was going to do. Backspace. <laughs> uh, backspace will backspace it. I could do that. Or to make life easier on myself, I could type George's name over here, Annika's name over here, Peter's name over here, and we'll say there's a Monica and an, and an Annika. That's going to make my life hard if I'm the actual employee. Uh, so I'm going to list them over here. And notice over here, if I say equals G4, then it will say George equals G4. I could do it that way. Um, that way helps because if George gets fired and I replace him with someone named uh, Tom, it'll just change from George to Tom. So, so that's helpful. I don't have to go change it over here. I just have to change it in the one original place and it stays the same. We're going to make George work over here and put him over here. George has a really weird schedule, doesn't he? Notice I just broke my own rule there by typing it. So let's fix that <laughs> equals G4. 
for. The other thing I can do is just say copy, you know, paste. But notice it pasted George. It didn't say equals G4. So there's that. Um, so anyway, different ways of doing it. Um, fix that to equals G4. Uh, we're going to say, uh, we're going to stop. Okay. We're going to say this equals G5. We're going to plug Annika into here. Right. Uh, we're going to say Monica works there. Right. Put George back there. Um, or Monica back there. Oh, sorry. That was G3. <laughs> All kinds of mistakes. Um, there we go. Notice that highlights it to let you know whether you're doing it right. Put Peter in some places here. He probably wants some hours so he can get some money so he can take his girlfriend out to eat. So we'll give Peter that shift. We'll give Monica the shift. G7. Give Monica that shift. Um, so you just fill it in. I'm not going to waste a bunch of more time of your time doing this. Um, so a uh, very helpful tool, right, uh, to fill it in. Uh, but the next thing we need to do, though, is this looks ugly and it's hard to read. If I'm Peter, this is frustrating. Um, one thing I could do that some students have done in the past, which is fine, is put Peter's name, uh, put the days of the week at the top and the employee's names down the left and then put the days of the week in the middle. Uh, I mean, put the shifts in the middle. You could do that. You could. That's called inverting a table. Uh, very helpful tool. But also, I think it's helpful if we color code it. So let's make this look pretty, shouldn't we? So the first thing I want to do is this title is really awkward. It's up here in the corner. You can't really read it too well. So we're going to use what's called merging cells. And it's this icon right here. We're going to merge the cells. That makes several cells one different cell. You can actually merge vertical cells together too. Um, so I, I'm not going to do that though. I'm going to hit cancel because I don't want to do this. Um, so, but, but I could do it here. I'll do it here to show you. So I can do it that way too. And then you just click the button and click it off if you want to unmerge them. The next thing I'm going to do is center the title. See, doesn't it look so much better in the center? Uh, the font's still really small. So let's bump the font. Oh, hey, that's cool and readable. Uh, so anyway, that's getting better. Once again, this font's small. Let's bump this font up. So let's make it look, we're just using basic formatting up here to just make it look readable, make it look like something that, that people can see. Uh, but it's still all black and white and I still have to search. So the next thing I want to do is make it pretty. Let's make it color coded, right? So we're going to se uh, select all the cells right here. We're going to select these merge cells and we're just going to add a background color. That's this icon right here, this little bucket icon. Well, let's just put a nice little orange behind it. It is pizza, right? And then I'm going to make the days of the week another color just to make it look good. These are all things you have to do, by the way. So just follow along, right? Just make, just give it a little bit of a color scheme. Make it so that your employees think, ooh, ah, I want to come to work because it's so pretty, right? Um, so yeah, just things like that. This cell needs to be a little bit bigger, apparently. Notice this state in the middle. Isn't that awesome? Um, then the next thing I can do to help George, Annika, Peter, and Monica out, you know, um, is give them a color too. So George is always going to be blue, right? And Annika, yeah, she's always going to be purple. Annika likes purple. I've never met anybody named Annika who didn't like purple. Uh, let's say yellow is going to be Peter. Let's say Monica is going to be kind of a reddish color. So I'm going to give them um, some colors. And then over here, let's test something out. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Over here, notice the colors don't copy. So the cell formats do not copy over when you say equals G4. So in that case, we're just going to copy, right? And we're going to paste George in the blue. Um, I think in Microsoft Excel, they do copy. So we'll have to figure that out, right? Um, and notice, yeah, notice we kind of messed up. So there we go. I think in Excel, they do copy, but in Sheets, they don't, which is going to bug us next week. Oh, see, there it went. Yeah, there the color went. That's weird. Okay, notice if we copy equals G4. I should have done this earlier. Um, no. Where did George go? Oh, see what it's doing there? Oh, it's copying one column over. Sometimes these programs are too smart for their own good. So... Anyway, you guys get the idea. I'm just going to go back to the simple copy and paste, right? Simple copy and paste. Um, 
So now the employees know I'm not looking for my name, I'm looking for my color. I'm looking for purple, I'm looking for blue. I'm looking for, ooh, Annika's gonna be mad, I'm putting her on an overnight shift, three days in one week, but she likes working overnight, she's a night owl. At least that's what I'm gonna tell myself to make myself sleep better at night. Uh, Monica will put right there and right there, fill in a few more Georges. Um, so this is all I want you to do for your assignment this week. Um, is just, uh, why do I keep, I keep meaning to grab Annika. Um, and so, there we go. <laughs> so this is all I want you to do. Just play around with color schemes, play around with, um, play around with everything. Peter's not working that many hours. We'll give him a couple more hours. Um, so notice this, you can say paste values, paste format. Um, so that's a very helpful tool to tell you what when you're copying and pasting to copy and paste. So, so that's a good timesheet. That's something I can read. One more thing I can do is add outlines. So right now, if I printed this, it would print the colors, but it wouldn't print the outlines. So I can add borders by just clicking this button. I can add borders above, below, between, but really I just want to do that, right? So now there's helpful outlines. Now it's a readable schedule. Um, I can make a thing that says employee names over here so they know what that is. And now it's a very pretty timesheet schedule. So how's that for introduction to Excel? Not too much difficult there. Just a fun assignment. Make, make me a timesheet like this. Pretend you're the uh, boss of a pizza company or something and, and uh, make this for me. And, um, and if you followed along, you should already have it done. Just uh, when you're done, you can share it to Canvas or just upload the file into Canvas. So let me know if you have any questions right here in the topics. Uh, if you have questions, do you like spreadsheets? What did you like about the lesson? Not questions, comments, what was fun? What'd you learn? So make sure you're staying on top of the discussion component. We'll see you all next time.